Yeah. Hello, Grendel. Yeah, why? Well, <laughs> welcome. Yeah. One moment. All right, let's get yeah. you cool, there, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Greetings. Greetings. To all. There, there's. I just had a feeling somebody wanted to talk to me, so I came. There, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, everybody wants to talk to Grendel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, I'm going to try to keep the hand motions to uh, limited. Jim said it looks too weird when he watches it back. Uh, but, hey, I can't help it. This is who I am. Ah. Uh, <laughs> So there. There. What questions do you have for me? Well, I do have one thing to say first. Okay. And that is Eliaha is really uh working a lot with many people. And there is many things coming forth from them, many good things. There's less pain and less uh, difficulties with many of the situations. <laughs> so they're doing a good, as good as they, a good as possible for right now, and I think with the uh, release of uh, more calming energies, they'll even be much better. Yeah. Yeah. All Liney, right. Any questions? Well, this just to tell you, Liney said that your hands are making up for your lack of tail movement, so we understand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She you don't want to see tail. Movement, believe We'd me. like to see. Yeah. It. But go ahead, Sher. Yeah, well, you might get slapped with it. I don't know. That might not feel so good. Okay. Uh, tail <laughs> movement can be dangerous. Tail movement, yeah. Okay. But anyway, oh, I'll, I'll try to keep it out of Yeah. Hey, Grandma. But it's all right. Grant, oh, yeah, Sher, is that you? Yeah, how are you? Yeah, hey, I'm good. I'm good. I just want to ask if you've been filled on the... Uh, a certain test that maybe I should have you Yeah, I was help. looking at that. Yeah. Can I you see like it. Uh, well, um, you didn't get 100%. Let's put it that way. No, I just need to pass. Um, there's only a very small chance that I actually pass. Well, I, I, yeah, I think it's going to be sort of borderline at this point. It was a rough test. And it was in an area that you're not real adept in. So we'll see what we can do. Yeah. Yeah, because it's a government test. It's not. Um, yeah, I know. Yeah. And a lot of it's test, a math so, one, right? The math portion. So yeah, um, it's bi bureaucracy. Yeah. If you can, like, move things along, uh, you know, threaten some officials and stuff like that. Yeah, the math portion is where. There's quite some questions, so uh, well, we'll talk about that later. But uh, hopefully that you'll get through that. Yeah, and you will actually. I know you will. Yeah, but we'll uh, talk about that later. Yeah, I actually want to ask you. There's a yeah. lot of investig investigations are against uh, Benjamin Netanyahu. Yeah, and now mm -hmm. there's, yep. kind of, there's recording on the. The one, the special prosecutor, not not special prosecutor. It's called something else. The one that supposed to say if the investigation are going to go to a trial or not, and yeah. they say that Bibi got his got him in his pocket and stuff like that. And there's a lot of stuff just going on, yeah. a lot of craziness. You, mean, you hmm? would be surprised how many nations are going through this kind of actions. The United States is going through this, Israel, uh, Syria, um, Egypt, in, many, in some ways, in um, Pakistan. They're, they're just, uh, even in lower, I mean, even in the smaller ways, uh, Japan and China and Russia, uh, they're all going through all these interrogations, going through all kinds of uh disruptive kind of activities in the governments these there are financial reasons there are um, reasons for this because they want different people in power and they're afraid that uh, 
these what is going to happen in the near future that some of these leaders aren't strong enough to handle in the, the most appropriate ways. So you're seeing all kinds of um, questioning and interrogation around the world because even in um, North Korea, they're questioning him as well. Uh, he doesn't like that, of course. And he that's pretty kept pretty quiet and and because you don't hear anything out of there it's kept very much uh quiet what happens in that country but you'll find that there are those that are um rising up against him in, in some small ways that are um very disruptive to him and when he's disrupted the whole government is disrupted so um you will find many things going on like that at this time. And it is because they see on the horizon a great shakeup of the world. I see. And I don't know, many, many people are still supporting him, even though he has like five uh, cases stacking up against him. Two of them are going to go. Yes. To so easy. It is the same everywhere. There will be those that will be steadfast and loyal to those that are in office because they always believed in them, always. They were there at the beginning of their reign and they are not, they don't see where any of this could possibly be true. And so they just keep their loyalty and faith. It will happen with every single leader that's under fire they will have their support groups. This makes it much harder for things to get done, but it is what it is. So yeah, yeah. there you have it. Uh, I see. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You're welcome. And, and as a person that works in the Israeli government, I can see even those people that are in the, uh, uh, middle management, middle government, have their supports, have their beliefs. Some are for him, some are against him, and they're having little arguments about that all the time. So, because it, it is a way of disrupting everything at all levels. And, and um, that is what's happening on the earth. The earth is being disrupted in every level at some point. You may not feel that, you may not see that, but if you look carefully around the world, you'll see disruption at every level. Society, um, early government, uh, um, local government, uh, state government, or uh, uh, even um, providential governments and uh, territorial governments. And then even at the higher levels, all things are being disrupted. Yeah. All right. You know, you guys aren't asking very many questions. Well, today. we have two more questions coming. I, I just wanted to make sure I didn't. Yeah, all right. Before right, we right. Um, Ava yeah, and Lainey. There's like questions. Of, I can't even get them all in. But, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Ava. Hi, Grindel. Thank you so much for coming because I have Hello. a um, personal painful question. And uh, oh, I, no. oh, here we go. Um, there is some disruption, like you're talking, between me, me communicating with other people. And here I'm talking about light workers, which is especially painful for me. I always come from a place positive place when I'm trying to communicate but somehow my words are misinterpreted as if I would be giving some negative message um, so is it my problem with communicating or is it some negative being between me and the world which changes well listen I'm carefully whenever people talk Sometimes the listener is negative. Sometimes those that are listening 
are looking for the negative in what you say. They're not looking for the positive in what you say. They can twist what you say into meaning what they think they think they should be hearing from you because they think everybody has negativity in them and everybody is out to say something negative to them, perhaps. Perhaps they have a very low self-esteem. However, be very careful at the tone of your voice as well because I have a problem with that. I have a problem with saying things like, yeah, hello. You know, and they take that as negative, but I'm really saying hello. So, but it's it's not perceived as really positive because I said, yeah, hello. And the tone of my voice was not correct in their, in their sight. So make sure, all of you, this is a good lesson for everyone, that when you're talking to people, you have a, a tone that is, uh, sort of light in your voice. I have a hard time with that. I have a hard time sounding light. Yeah. I have a hard time with that. And people often misinterpret what I say. Well, screw you. So if you don't interpret it right, then uh, I can't help it. But um, the thing is, I have to, I have to be careful. And so do you, because you have a very serious face. They're looking at your facial expression. They're, they're not hearing what you say as much as your facial expression is very serious and maybe seem negative to them. Perhaps you might want to try to smile a little more when you're around people so that they are understanding that you are lighter, that you are not so serious. But you get you are a serious person it, by and large. And when they look at you, that is the first thing they say. You have a beautiful face. However, it looks very serious. And if you say, hello, how are you? It sounds very serious. It does not sound light. So be careful. And plus the fact people are, there are those that are negative and look for negative messages. But when they see your face and it's not happy or your eyes are not shining, they can misinterpret what you say. Grinda, I'm also talking in writing when they don't see me, and I am writing to light workers. Yes. And so, well, let me put it this way. Text is difficult unless you're an expert at writing, which some of you are. Some things in text can seem totally different than what you intentioned. You can say, Things in text that are very positive, but when they're reading them, they're going, why in the hell did they write that to me? That's so negative. That's awful. Oh, dear. Have you experienced? I'm sure others have experienced this. And you go, no, no, I didn't mean it that way. I meant it this way. And then you have to reword it and say it in a even lighter way or in a, in a way that they understand it better. But text can you see, they don't see your face. They don't hear the expression in your voice. When they're reading text, if they're a negative person, or if they are used to not getting positive feedback, they will take the most negative approach to what you is written. I Remember, this can cause so many problems. If you write something, it can be misinterpreted and... And you may not even know that they misinterpreted it. And, and that can be a problem in the world today because there's a lot of texting and there's a lot of people that are just insensitive about what they text. They may not mean anything bad by it, but they just text something that can be misinterpreted or seem negative. So be careful what you text. Look at it and read it a second time. If they don't know you very well, then be be careful what you text. Yeah. And you can also say, I mean this in a very positive way, or this is a very, uh, my thought process on uh, this is positive, and then write something because that will change how they read it. You might have to preface 
what you write sometimes in order for them to understand that is a positive, a, a lot of positive blurb instead of negativity. Uh, because there's so much negativity right now. It's it's the uh, it's the uh, theme of the day when people look at things they 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 look negative negatively at it because that is the way the world is focused. Okay, thank you so much. Love you. Much love to you. Um, Liney has a question. Liney. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, hey. Hi. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, recently there was something weird going on. Um, uh, do you know um, Amazon Alexa? That what, thing. Yeah, say that again. Do you know Amazon Alexa? No, I don't. Who's uh, that? It's, it's yeah. Amazon. Amazon Alexa? Yeah. It's the it's the machine that oh, oh, oh yes, yeah, yeah. I know what you're I thought you were talking about a person. You're talking about <laughs> that little thing that sits on the table that says stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, I know what that is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, recently, um that last couple of days or, or this week, um, people have been saying that it's it was like laughing for no reason and they're getting some strange things. Is that um, a problem in the programming, or is it AI? No, actually, if you um, if you're um, if you understand how it is programmed, there is some laughter and some unusual responses programmed into it. Just like on your telephone, if you if you have an iPhone or a phone that talks to you, those that have programmed these phones put some text and some answers in there that are not usual. Like if you tell Siri that he's stupid or something, he will say, that's not very nice. And uh, you would think that, you know, how did they program that in or why did they program that in? They just wanted to make you feel more trustworthy toward Siri, that he's a little bit more human, a little bit more, um, a little bit warmer than just a uh, a voice. So uh, they have programmed some of these things into these electronics. So don't be um, outraged by the fact that Alexa might be laughing. That might be part of the programming. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> okay. Did you hear? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The phone turned on when I spoke, and um, I didn't even say "Hey Siri" or anything. Uh, no, I just wanted it. Um, something interfering. But that something, something that I said was programmed into the phone, and it reacted to it, which is very unusual because uh, I wasn't even aware that I said anything that it would react to. So. There you have it. Um, just, it just might as well have been laughter. <laughs> uh, just one other thing. Um, but there's a uh, people um, over the world that have been report that be re reporting um, some like lights in the distance, it's like distance. glowing lights, like yeah. and orange. Um, even in the yeah. UK, do you know what, what that is? Yeah. There are ships. There's a lot of ships around the planet right now. A lot. And they're not allowed to come into the atmosphere, but those that you see, the, those that are colored and you can see, actually have come into the atmosphere and hit certain kinds of um, electromagnetic waves or something that make them appear. Now, not all fourth dimensional ships or fifth dimensional ships will become visible in the atmosphere. But some of them run into these fields and the resonance of the field along with the resonance of the ship, the vibration of the ship, if you will, frequency, whatever you want to call it, will cause some of them to be visible. They may not even be aware of it. Yeah. So, and um, 
here they are. They're coming along. They don't even think anybody can see them, and they're zooming through. But yes, they are, um, especially in the UK and uh, uh, Swiss, Swiss, Finland, Norway, uh, that those islands there to the north uh, of England. What are they called? There's an island section right in there that's very sparsely populated. What is that island section called? Hebrides. I don't know. Well, I don't know. It's 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 very it's a home to many different alien bases because there's only like twelve people that live on the islands. You know, it's very very lightly uh, populated. There's not a lot of people there. Maybe a little a village here and there, but there's a lot of alien activity up in that direction below the Scandinavia and above England. Do you know where I mean? Yes. Thank you. Very good. Yeah. yeah. Any more questions? Yeah, Christine has a question. Christine. Has a question. Christine. Hello, Hello. How, are How are you? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm good. Um, How are you doing? Um, I'm trucking along. Trucking along. There's a phrase I haven't heard since the 60s. All right, go ahead. Um, in my area, um, there's going up a lot of solar um, farms. Like, yes. Like crazy. Um, <laughs> and I just uh, purchased um, to have solar um, panels on my house. Um, yeah. Is this um, a good trend that's going on now? Because I, I'd hate to see all that land um, become filled with homes because there's a lot of ranches and farmland there. Yes, I would too. I understand what you're saying. Solar energy is good. It's not the most efficient way to do things yet because they don't know how to make it as efficient as it can be. But it is a good beginning. Uh, solar energy is free and it and it comes from the sun and they can transfer it into electrical energies and it can be very helpful. And it also, I don't know if they talk to you about this or not, but if you make, if you gather so much a uh, solar energy, it can be stored for the future and it can be actually uh, used to uh, send back to the electric company so they can use it. They will buy that off of you to send back. Uh, if you send it back, if you have an excess, if, we, if you start running your house purely on solar energy, you can send the excess energy to them <coughs> and they will buy it for a yes, very I small price, of course. Because you got it, well, almost for free. You had to buy the panels. Well, I'm hoping to get it to supplement my Social Security. So. I see. Yeah. I, I don't trust stocks and bonds. So instead, I'm ah. investing in, in solar. Well, you see, they'll be good up to a certain point. Uh, and <coughs> people will... Uh, will benefit from them for a good while, but then after a point, they won't be any good anymore. But don't lose faith in them quite yet. <laughs> okay. Yeah. okay, I'll leave some money in there then. Yeah. Thank I need you. some water. Can someone help me? Yes. Can please someone take care of yeah, Jim? Yeah. Uh, Grendel's drinking Jim some needs water. some water. He's starting. My voice gets on his nerves, I think, ma'am. <laughs> Thank you, Grindel. You're welcome. Is there any question oh, in the right. room yeah, there right. with Grindel? What? I what? You... <laughs> we're, we're out of questions on our side. I was checking to see if there's any questions in the room there. Uh, I have one. Uh, there is another. There is one in the room. Okay. If, uh, if, uh, she can get here. Hold on. <laughs> okay. Gimpy. Um, so when Lainey was talking about the lights, uh, the um, 
that was in the sky at times it would light up a, the whole horizon is that the is that the ship that it was or is it multiple ships one ship it's multiple it? ships yes but it will tend to light up, light up the whole horizon if they uh, come into contact with the right uh, electromagnetic uh, pulses or if they come in contact with certain vibrational energies they will all become visible and bright lighten up your uh, horizon but it's not the mother ships will not come that close so it's not one ship it uh the mother ships will all be out in space pretty far away uh, they try not to get too close they um humans tend to be very threatened by uh gigantic ships nearby so yes even the one out by Jupiter, the, the 26 foot long, or 26 mile long um, cylinder ship that's filled with water, the uh, uh, which I assume is the Dolphin Whale Alliance, that just stays there. It doesn't move. So I, I don't know if it's moved. I haven't really looked, but it was there for a while. But, um, you know, they're just going, what is that? What is it doing there? Uh, where are the... They get all upset, so because um, it 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 was in third dimension, so uh, that's why it was more upsetting to them because it was easily seen. So the, the second part of my question is: there's been a lot of flashes and booms on a large level. Yeah, well, your the disruption of the energies on the Earth level has caused these kinds of things in the atmosphere. Uh, you, uh, they've also been reporting very unusual noises in certain places, uh, which is uh, different vibrations in the atmosphere because of these different different kinds of energy disturbances and the way that the weather is moving and the, all these things put together cause some very unusual things on the planet. So do not be uh really frightened by that they're actually natural uh, even though they may not sound natural or uh, or feel natural some of them are being um are affected by the movement of the earth and these disruptive energies and i i know you know about the sound yes, those yes, weird yes sounds yeah, the trumpet, on the, like some trumpet. Yeah, and a trumpet sound and all these things. It's it just is what it is, uh, and they can the atmosphere is creating these sounds. Now, some of them, these sounds may be helped be 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 helped by saucers and spaceships that are moving in their area, which are unnatural. So yes. But the atmosphere is just reacting to what these different vibrations and different frequencies. So and different wind volumes and how how the wind has changed, how thunder has changed. How uh, has anyone noticed that thunder has changed? That it sounds a little different in this day and age than it did ten years ago. The thunder has changed sound. It's it's actually seems closer right than when it's when it's right over you it's closer sounding it seems like the clouds come closer to the ground when they make thunder sounds and so many people are commenting on that throughout the world at one time so yes they're used to it now but yes there's different things going on thank you so much you're welcome um, I have a couple questions from the YouTube chat, if you don't mind. Yeah, of course you do. <laughs> Krelik uh, has a question about, he wants to know, and if you can inform us how zero-point energy works. Oh, uh, zero-point energy. I'm not even sure what that is. <laughs> I, it, I probably know it as something else. Can you describe what it is so that I can maybe uh, put my finger on my version of it? Okay, uh, Krelik, if you can type that in uh, in the chat, and then let me go to the other because question. I, um, I really don't know what that is. That's fine. Um, and Rado wants to know uh, if you can ex talk about the market crash. 
Oh, you mean the one that's coming? I or the one that just happened? Can you maybe address both and then we're covered? <laughs> All right. Well, there was a little bit of a market crash not too long ago. And it, it affected the world in a very slight way. You remember how the stocks were going up and up and up and up and and world stocks were also going up and then all of a sudden they came back down. Uh, it really wasn't a crash. It was a really just a balancing out of Correction. all the uh, financial energies that were. So it went way up, but it came down and balanced out. So it really wasn't a crash so much, but some people reported it as a crash. Uh, it, 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 but it really wasn't. It was very mild. It did affect the Earth economy in some ways. There are some people that did go completely broke, and some people that uh, made a fortune and stuff like that. But it wasn't really a crash. So, but there is going to be an economic crash eventually. The reason is the Earth is under huge economic strain everywhere there are uh spain italy um greece all oh, these pla these uh places are about ready to collapse some of them even china is cheaters back and forth uh collapse not collapse and and eventually the weight of the uh, financial system will collapse because more money is owed more money is owed than there really is in existence there is that money in existence but some of it is worthless some things like uh, certain dollar bills or the uh, here's a good example right now the ten trillion, no, the hundred trillion dollar bill from Zambia, the hundred trillion dollar bill from Zambia is worth forty cents. Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe. What did I say? Zambia. Oh, it's Zimbabwe. That's right. It's worth forty cents. Now think about that. Ten trillion dollar, a hundred trillion dollar bill worth forty cents. That is amazing to me. What about to you? Doesn't that sound a little off? So this is the way the world is operating at this time. They have more money printed than there actually is. Otherwise, the hundred trillion dollar bill would be worth a hundred trillion dollars. Correct. Yeah. All right. These are the kinds of things you're up against when you're looking at world fiduciary of, uh, systems. And you're going to see that they're going to collapse because they cannot hold themselves up. They cannot support themselves. When you have a $100 trillion bill, that's only worth 40 cents. So now there are other things going to happen in the meantime. There, uh, some of you know about the St. Germain Trust Fund, which will be opened eventually and give the world greater, uh, greater uh, money value. But that will not last long. As that money is dispersed, uh, uh, not long after that, there will be other events that will actually cause the the collapse of the 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 entire collapse will happen because everything will teeter off balance when that is released. It won't take long for that to teeter everything off balance, maybe 10 years or something, but or or not even that long, but it will help to unbalance the financial systems that the cabal have set up so accurately, but they're they're struggling with it at this time. Yeah. All right, does that answer your question? I, I could go so. into lots of detail about that because, of course, Grindel knows about money. So, mm. <laughs> um, okay. Grindel um, like money. Grindel like money. Okay. Yeah, but I have to deal with it here on your planet as a walk-in. Uh, I have to deal with money, and, and and you know what? It's 
it's sort of fun because it's not my money, so <laughs> I get to play with it, but I don't. Uh, it's really not mine, so. Okay, just to clarify the question from Krelik, he, he, he said that zero point energy is the anti-gravity technology. It's a series of spinning oh. to create levitation and he doesn't know so oh. much about it, but he would like some more information. Oh, that's been around for centuries. Not, not on your planet, but it's been around in the universe for centuries. How do you think they lifted some of those stones on the, on the pyramids or, or, or in Machu Picchu and or in the Puma Punka, how they lifted the uh, great uh, gigantic hundreds of thousands of pound stones into place into place. You're you're not going to get ten guys that are going to do that. No, not even a hundred or not even a thousand. Because how are you going to get a thousand guys around it to begin with? So it's just not practical. And they, in the pulley system, yeah, that's not going to work either. Not for that weight. So, yes, the anti-gravity has been around for a long time. I can't tell you how it works because in order to do that, I'd have to use equations and numbers that you wouldn't understand. But, um, and, and, and frankly, I don't know all the numbers and fractions and all that. I just know that it works. And that it has been employed on this planet many times. The anti-gravity will become part of your future. There's no question. That is on your planet already. It's been here for a while. It's just not talked about. It's not, um, <laughs> they're still playing with it. It's like the uh, Hadron Collider. They've made a, a zillion discoveries there, but you don't hear about them all um, unless it's something that would benefit humanity. They've actually made some pretty big boo-boos there that if the humanity knew about what where they were, what kind of errors they made, they'd be scared shitless. Oh, am I allowed to say that? No. But anyway, um, <laughs> all right, they'd be scared. Real bad. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Real bad scared. Yeah, Real bad they'd be, scared. Yeah, they'd be right up there. So oh. anyway, yeah, they're they're um they're messing with some pretty dangerous stuff, really. So I I, I know that. Okay. Um Liney has a question. <laughs> yeah. I Go know. for it. Liney, are you there? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I'll ask her question for, she asked first, so I'll ask it uh, first and then I'll do Barbara. Um, she wanted to know if, um, Hello. oh, um, there, she, there she's there. Go ahead. Yeah. No, sorry. I'll just then turn my. All right. Hello. Go. All right. Okay. I don't All know right, what's happening. I, Liney, I don't know what's happening with her. Or not. Liney, no? Yeah. Okay, go I ahead. Sorry, I just stepped away from my um, laptop for a minute. Um, yeah, I wanted to know. Um, uh, sorry, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sorry, I wanted to know. Um, there was something um, in Antarctica recently by the mountains, and... Um, that somebody's saying that it might have something might have crash landed because it left some like trail marks. Is that is that anything? Well, well there's a there's a ship there already. Um, it is us uh, under underground and under ice. They they know it's there. They they know that it's there, and these are uh, beings that know it's there as well. They didn't actually crash, but it was a near crash. Uh, they got too close and um, they almost crashed, but they did leave some marks on the side of the mountains, etc. But uh, it wasn't a crash uh, completely and they were able to uh, return to the atmosphere. All oh, right. Okay. Yeah, no, it's interesting. Thank you for confirming that. All right. Very good. Yes, but that that was part of what's going on. There's so much going on in Antarctica. They're making discovery after discovery 
about world conditions, weather conditions. Um, the poles tell you a lot about what the planet was like uh, millions of years ago. And more recently, there's um, there's so much evidence of global warming and ice ages and things of this nature that they are they are amazed how much information they learn from Antarctica. Yeah. Plus, there's other stuff going on there. You would you don't even want to know. It's a mess. But anyway, go ahead. Is there any other questions? Um, we have a question that's actually uh, it's it's for Tucker, but um, maybe we should wait. All right. Oh, we oh well. Tucker. Well, um, I'm not Tucker. We know that. Not that pretty. But, um, <laughs> but um, I might be able to answer it. Okay. Well, Barbara said that uh, two people uh, saw both saw a ship a couple months ago, and she wanted yeah. to know who was who was the ship. Who was it? No. And that's all she well, said. What did it look Grindel? like? She said that Tukur said two of the Hukalo people saw it. I think Tukur probably would know the answer. Maybe not you. I don't know. Yeah, I, I didn't see it. So, man, maybe I can't answer that one. Did they, did she, but didn't you ask her about that before? I, I don't know. Um, maybe Barbara asked. Uh, Barbara, did you ask, did she tell you that it was reptilian? No. She's saying no. Okay. No, I, it wasn't. Before, it wasn't me. That, so <laughs> yeah, it was Tucker. We'll we'll ask if Tucker comes. All right. Very yeah. good. Okay. Thank you. Um, it, it, is there any questions in your room? Because we're we're any uh, questions? If not, we'll bring Tucker so she can answer that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you, Grendel. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. Let me get out of here. Hold on. Don't forget your table. Have a good day. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you didn't serve any drinks, but eh. well, you did get drinks. Just the water. Um, if if maybe Jim needs some more water before Tucker comes. Yeah. <clears throat>